Yay, good morning. How are you? It's me again. <laughs> I hope you're keeping well. What are your pet peeves? What peeves you? Do you know what peeves you? Now, pet peeves, uh, at least according to the dictionary, are things that irritate, annoy, or anger you. It's as simple as that. But it's amazing how we are quick to know what irritates us about other people, but seldom pay any mind about we, things we do that irritate other people. So I want us to have a quick chat about uh, pet peeves. I was thinking about uh, my relationships and those people I, I deem and call my friends. And I was really looking deep into my character as it pertains how I relate to these people. When I've asked for favors, how they pull through, and when I said things and I didn't pull through, and just uh, deciding within myself to try and be more reliable because I am completely peeved by people who are unreliable. And I don't mean even in the grand scheme of things, uh, like uh, maybe you need money or you need them to pull through about something very significant in your life. I just mean in the in the day-to-day -day, um, life, like somebody who, say, you called and has never called back, somebody who uh, you text and does not text back, somebody who is always late, now you are counting on them to be late, perpetually late. Um, somebody who doesn't do their shares of the chores, be it in the group work, in the office, or even house chores. Um, I, I keep saying this, if you can't practice what you preach, either stop preaching or only preach what you practice. I am completely uncomfortable with people who say, but it's my private life, what I do in private is my business. I feel very strongly that your life is the weight of your words that's why people get shocked there's one time i was doing this tv show maybe three years now and uh, it, i was the only gent and uh, the others were ladies the panelists were ladies and we used to talk about issues of everyday life relationship sex marriage and one time we decided to go and have a good time all right um i'm a teetotaler now i used to drink back in the day but now no no i don't drink now I, I, alcohol doesn't do anything to me, so I stopped altogether. Um, so we were hanging out. Even in the days I drink, it was very sociable. Maybe a glass of wine or two. I would never get drunk to a stupor. I've never been that guy. I don't fancy drinking. So we were out hanging out, and my lady friends were really having fun. And, and one of my friends threw her legs in dancing, and I caught it because she was almost falling. And there was a camera person there. It was somewhere in Westlands. And then uh, they took a picture of her leg on my shoulder and posted it online. And so it did round that picture and guys went bazak. So guys started saying, oh my goodness, these are the panelists who advise us on relationships. And they're here doing this. <laughs> and, um, and I wouldn't fault them, you know, because how can you come here and tell me about a relationship? And then you act crazy. So I believe very strongly that your life is the weight of your words. So, number one pet peeve for me is people who are perpetually unreliable. People who are perpetually unreliable. Because you know why? If you develop a pattern of not following through, no matter how big or small a promise, it eats away from the trust and security of the relationship. Be the security, or rather be the relationship platonic or romantic. If you do this with your sister, you say something and you don't pull through. It eats away from the security and trust of the relationship. You tell your sister, uh, sis, hook me up with 10 Gs. I'll return on Tuesday. The only thing she has is your word. So if you don't return it on Tuesday, then she's messed up. So I think there are real dangers in, um, um, you know, being utterly unreliable. So I'm trying. I'm trying. I was thinking about my friends the other day. And I could count four of my friends who are completely reliable. My friend Ogembo, I went uh, to have lunch with the other day, is one of them. He doesn't speak much. Very laid-back guy. If Ogembo told you something, if he told you something, if it came out of his mouth, he's going to do it. And it's such an impeccable character that um, I espouse to have, you know. If he says, let's do it at 2 o'clock on Saturday, he's going to do it. I could completely bank on his word and sleep when he said something. And it's such an admirable trait to have. And I could count maybe three other friends who are like that. I am not yet like that. I hope to be. But I think it's amazing if somebody can be reliable. And reliability for me, number one. 
Being unresponsive is a pet peeve for me again. Not responding to texts or phone calls. It shows lack of interest, especially as an adult, if you're in a relationship. Somebody has texted you, you're not responding. It's, it's, it's annoying, you know? Say something. Say you won't be able to communicate. Always letting, always letting only one person pay in a dating or platonic relationship. I am one of, one of the things I believe in well, I love to give. I consider myself as uh, fairly generous. I'm not stingy. I'm not Mukono Birika. But, um, again, to give a reference to a friend of mine. So he's married. He's been married now seven years. And he tells me that when they were dating, uh, they decided, the girlfriend told him, then the girlfriend, now wife, the girlfriend told him that every third date she'll be paying and she didn't have an elaborate job. So uh, they'd go out, say, on Friday, then go out for um, a night out on Saturday. Then on Sunday for the movie night, or the next Sunday they meet for a movie night, she'd take out her pass and pay for the movie tickets. And I think that's beautiful. I'm uncomfortable with people who are open baskets. You cannot be an open basket. You can't. You are perpetually a recipient. Perpetually a recipient. Give me. <sighs> Come on, man. I think reciprocity makes for something in a relationship. All right? You know these guys who are given the phone to give people's girlfriends directions in bars? And the guy who's waiting for the girlfriend is so important he can't talk to the girlfriend. That guy who's always being bought for drinks. The guy who gives directions. Like, Hello? Uh, uh, just a uh, party taxi. Hello. So I said, "Fika kileleshwa, piga left, and then you turn right, and then he comes back, and then the guy who's sent away to look for nyama, if it's ivad, is told okay, just go and talk to the kitchen person and see if the meat is cooked, because they are open baskets. So I think it's very important if you can work out a plan around your relationship, whatever it may be. It needn't be anything elaborate, but surely if we've been dating for eleven years or eleven months or. 10 dates we've gone and you think that it's in order for you to perpetually receive that's sad that is sad i mean all of us are working all right so if i take you out to arboretum and we do an elaborate um picnic or even maybe a miniature picnic for crying out loud just buy me even a soda and a scones something we are dating Ish, Germany. Refusing to apologize or not knowing how to apologize or even swearing and saying, Me, Missy, where's the apologize? Yamanome, I am sorry, but I can't. When you apologize to men, they get big heads. I can't. I'd rather linger. I'd rather the relationship dies. Imagine, babes, I can't. I think that is sad. When you are or you commit an error, sex isn't an apology. Slow grilled steak for his dinner is not an apology. Neither is smiling while sitting next to him watching sports. That's not an apology. Learn to apologize. You are a grown man and woman. Say, you know what? I take full responsibility for having odd. I erred in speaking to you like that. And I take that you got offended. I am sorry. I shouldn't have called you short in front of your friends. That was disrespectful on my part. I am very sorry. I have learned from my mistake. I'm not going to do it again. You've erred. Own up to it. Locking him at night is not apology. Like you're locking him with both of your feet. Jesus. I'm also peeved by people who use acronyms like LOL in actual face-to-face -face conversations. What's that about? Actually, lol, 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 you're funny, lol. Guy, you can't laugh. You're going to lol me to death here. I also am peeved by people who can't express their full sentiments. It's somebody's birthday, you write HBD. What happened to the other words? Are you tired? Are you that tired? Was traffic that bad? Own your sentiments. Or people who say, love you. Who do you love? Do you love the sky, the gods that are passing? Why can't you own your sentiments? I love you. You love me. Say it. Say it with your chest. It goes a long way. Love you. Nyo, nyo. 
Nyonyo. <laughs> oh my goodness me. What peeves you? What peeves you? I really want to hear. All right? Oversharing is another thing. I'm sorry you had a very tough childhood. We are just having the first date. We've ordered for cake. Then off you go. So that guy crept in. And then that day, my mother took us to the cold. We walked from Nyeri all the way to Karatina. And then by the time we were coming back to Mukurine that day, we were chased by dogs. That is sad. I'm sorry. That was a terrible life. Terrible happening. But uh, my name is Eric Omondi. I'm just getting to know you. Can you tell me more right there? Can you tell me more, Akimi, about maybe your interests for now? And then you can tell me about your horror stories, maybe on the 15th date, I guess. Don't overshare. Yo, there is corona and protected sneeze. Pieces me off. People do that all the time. Ata! Guy, utonipea corona, wewe, cover your mouth. All right? In the age of social media, these peeves me, maybe just me, but redundant hashtags. I am hashtag, so hashtag, happy hashtag, that hashtag, I hashtag, have hashtag, gotten hashtag, head hashtag, after hashtag, 29 hashtag, month. What is that? Many hashtags about. Hashtag, you are hashtag, so hashtag, annoying hashtag, learn hashtag, about hashtags. Jesus. <laughs> Oh my goodness me. Have a lovely day. I'll speak to you soon. And remember to subscribe. My name is Eric Omondi. Goodbye.